This is Dusty, and she is my dark-breasted barn owl, just coming up to three years old, and we'll start flying her today on this lovely winter's day. The sun is shining, it's a bit chilly, but that's okay, and she's having some nice chicken. Off you go. So we're gonna go for a much longer flight this time. Just gonna get her attention. Here she comes. Fabulous. Welcome to Owl Diary 39. The dark-breasted barn owl is one of many different species of barn owl found all around the world. They come in a variety of designs. They all have really similar features though, including that heart-shaped face. And even though Dusty here is quite a rare species herself, she's nowhere near as rare as some species of owl that exist in the world. You can even get albino owls that look a bit like this. Well, that's incredibly rare in birds and far more common in reptiles and amphibians. But there are many species of owl that are far more incredibly rare, like the Raja Scops owl that was spotted just last year for the first time since 1892, which is really amazing. So it's a brand new year and we're really excited about 2022. We've already got loads of bookings and flying shows in the diary. In fact, here on the screen right now is a list of all the shows that are currently booked in. We're really looking forward to it. We're gonna have birds like Gulliver flying to the lure. Again, we're gonna have the Harris Hawks doing their thing, chasing after people wearing the hawk helmet, swooping through the arms coming in and out of the trees, really impressing everybody. And of course the owls as well, including the eagle owls, maybe some running races, the barn owl doing some hand-to-hand -hand flights and lots of other exciting things as well. So we're really looking forward to getting back into the swing of that. In fact, Outdoor Shows Limited have booked us for all of their events this summer. And here's a list of those too. So if you're able to get out there to see us at any of those events, please do come along and we do need volunteers so we can throw you into the arena and see what happens. Now, Dusty here, I've got to say, is probably the friendliest owl we actually have. You know, they're all tame, they're all hand reared, but she is incredibly friendly. She does love attention. And when we open the box, for example, she jumps straight out at us. She doesn't just sit there like the others do to say, what do you want? So she really is fantastic. Generally nocturnal, but owls, including barn owls, the time nocturnal, will sometimes fly during the day, so it's not unusual for her to be awake right now. And flying the birds free, it really is the essence of what we do. The birds love it, it gives them exercise, it's enrichment, it's fresh air, it's a visual stimulation, flying somewhere different, but it's good for us as well. We like to get out and enjoy the great outdoors. So off you go, Dusty, a bit more flying for her, and then we'll move on to the next job of the day. Well, I've just injected my snake. Now, it's not a euthanism, I literally have just given my snake an injection course of antibiotics. So this is Boris the Boa. He's going around the back of my neck right now. And he is about nine years old now. And he's our largest snake, weighing in at around six kilos. And if you've watched any of our recent owl diaries towards the back of end of last year, you'll know that he had a chest infection. Now, we picked it up quite early. There was some symptoms, for example, a, a faint hissing sound coming from his breathing when he was normally breathing. And also little signs from the way he wasn't eating quite the same and things like that. So we had him checked out at the vets. In fact, he's had a couple of trips to the vets, in fact. And he had a test done. The lab came back with the results and showed us exactly what bacteria he's got. So we now have a new antibiotic to use. So he's gonna have an injection once every two days for a couple of weeks, and hopefully that will clear him up. So put him back in his vid there. Now, as well as having the injections for the antibiotics, we're also giving him some F10 nebulization. So what we've got down here is the nebulizer. I'm now gonna switch it on. And if I unclip it here, you can see the bit of steam coming out there. And essentially we're gonna do this pretty much every day for about 10 minutes. And what this essentially does is it gives the snake a bit of a session as if in a steam room. Now, as humans, if we get a bit of a chest infection, or we've had a bad cold, it's quite good to have a hot bath 
or to maybe spend some time in the steam room because that fluid in the air, that moisture, that humidity will help break up the guitar and remove the stuff that's in there making you feel unwell. And it's exactly the same thing here. Common practice to do with reptiles and other animals sometimes when they have this condition. So we're now going to turn his viv into a mini steam room for about 10 minutes. We'll do that daily and that will really help him sort him out. So hopefully, fingers crossed, he'll be feeling much better really, really soon. So all I can say is check back in next month's Owl Diary to see Boris's progress and hopefully we'll have him back out at bookings and events and displays very, very soon. About two weeks ago, I uploaded a video entitled Name Our New Gecko. And this is the gecko in question. He's a male leopard gecko, lovely big creature. Look at that tail, magnificent. That's where they store all their energy reserve, essentially. It's a lovely fat reserve there in the tail. And on the day we got him, he weighed in at 106 grams. And since then, he's maintained that weight more or less. And he's shed once his skin and he's been eating lots of crickets some mealworms and exploring his vivarium and I've also seen him drinking water as well so I'm really pleased with the way he's settled in but he hasn't got a name yet I'd like to thank everyone who has commented on that last video with their name suggestions we've had some really really fantastic suggestions of names and we even had this comment from Trevor Cross who doesn't agree this should be kept in captivity well Trevor thank you for commenting because any comment helps our algorithm now we've had some really good suggestions though and I've got a list here, actually there's about 50 names on the list and there's some really really good ones on here including Yoshi, that one nearly came in as the winning name, Skittles, Sherman's great because of his colour as well, uh, we've had Apollo, um, Hercules, Derek, Toenail, oh there's been absolutely loads so I'm really pleased with the response. However the name we're going to go for comes from Rob Hutchinson Magician and it is Gilbert the Gecko. Yeah, so we're going for Gilbert, we like alliteration. We've got Dusty the Dark-Breasted Barn Owl, we've got Bailey the Barn Owl, we've got Boris the Boa, etc. So it's quite good to have something that begins with a G. So this is now Gilbert our leopard gecko. Thanks to Rob for suggesting and thank you to all your comments you put on there. Hope you've enjoyed this month's Owl Diary. It's our monthly video we're going to be putting out which leaves more room for other different standalone videos during the month as well. So we've got lots of exciting ideas including some experiments we're going to be doing with our Harris Hawks and the owls and some of the other animals as well. So keep an eye out for them. So please hit subscribe or I'll feed Gilbert here to one of my my big owls. As always, thanks for watching.